I don't know if you get you can hear it, but one of the joys of staying in hotels for the majority of your life is listening to everyone argue in the room next to you. It's great. Hey done guys, Final Glide Oz here and I am stuck in a hotel room bored out of my brain so I thought I would make the most of the situation and do a little tutorial on flashing the KISS 24 amp ESC these are the ones with the older version so earlier than 1.02 that don't have the bootloader software on them and can't be uh, uh, flashed through the user interface of the KISS FC. So the ones that I'm talking about of course are versions 1.01 .01 and 1.0. Uh, they need to be upgraded to 1.02 then you can use the uh, the uh, the bootloader function in the user interface of the KISS FC. So the way that you know which one that you've got is most of the uh, ESCs around today will have a little sticker on them staying, saying what they are. So if you have 1.01 .01, then you need to upgrade it this way. Uh, there is, well there still should be some 1.0 ones kicking around. They didn't have a sticker on them but you can tell that they're 1.0 because the LED light on them is green rather than the blue that they all now are there. So if it's bleen, if it's bleen, if it's green that means you've you've got a version 1.0 that uh, in your hands. If you don't have a sticker on there and it's blue then uh, I don't know what to say. Um, you might just have to do it this way to be on the safe side. Uh, can't really help you there. Anyway uh, all the things that I'm going to be downloading programs and any links are going to be in the description so if you need any of that look in there and the only other things you're going to need is a USB uh, UART uh, uh, board um, other, I'm sure there's other things out there that look out my phone's going crazy I'm sure there's other things out there that also work. I can't vouch for what works and what doesn't work. USB UART was recommended to me and it works fine for me. So anyone that you can get out there. The one that I've got is, this is a USB UART that I picked up from one of the guys in Dubai. It's a one of Flyduino one, but I'm sure they all kind of work exactly the same. So the way that I have got this um, soldered up is purely very simple. I've got power leads on there so that you can hook up power so you can actually power the thing uh, and then I've got uh, the white wire goes to the transmit the uh, this yellowish wire goes to the receive and you've got the brown wire which is the ground and of course you've got transmit receive and ground connected to the USB UART board of course the transmit and the receiver are actually swapped so Transmit goes to receive and receive goes to transmit on the board, but anyone who's done that before will be fully aware of how that works. So that is pretty much it for the uh, uh, setting up of this. The only other thing you need to look at, and you won't need to worry about it now, is on the bottom of the um, the PCB of the of this ESC, you will see between the ground and the receive, there's a bootloader pad, two little pads. At the, second, at the second part of this, um, you do need to bridge that when you're flashing the firmware. Right now, we're just getting serial numbers and things like that. And I know a lot of you guys will get, oh no, serial numbers, I hate getting doing that. Look, I've got to agree with you as well. It's not that, it's not that fun getting the serial numbers. The reason why the serial numbers there uh, is purely so Flyduino can protect their products so that those fake uh, boards uh, from that are getting the clones can't be used uh, and that they're just basically protecting protecting their product which I'm sure you can agree is an important thing to do and the good news is when you flash it to 1.02 and you're flashing through the user interface you don't need to worry about serial numbers ever again so this is a basically a once off thing then the rest is going through the user interface so let's get started on getting into this so all we need to do is plug the ESC in so plug the ESC in the blue light will go on and then come off again and we plug it into the USB port. I'm using a Mac and I'm using Parallels, I'm using VM Fusionware, so uh, you can use Bootcamp if you want. So that's another thing to point out that yeah, you do need to use Windows, so if you're a Mac user like me, you will need to use a Windows machine or Parallels or whatever to do that. 
I'll be glad once I never have to do this again uh, because I hate Windows. But yeah, for this, with these steps, you do need to use a Windows machine or a use Windows on the Mac if you if you do have a Mac. But what we're going to go into first is to Arduino, and I'm not going to show you how to download these programs. It's all pretty simple to download these programs. It's not an issue at all. We go into Tools and go down to Serial Monitor. Once we're going to serial monitor, we want to make sure these are set like so. So both NL and CR and board is at 115200. Uh, and that should be like that by default, but just want to double check that. And I'm using COM port 3. That's where this USB UART board is going through. One easy way to check to make sure that you've got the right uh, COM port is to go down into the settings area and I just type in device manager. There it is there. We can open that up. And we go down to ports, com ports, and we can see here Silicon Labs CP210X USB to UART bridge com port 3. So we know it's com port 3 and it's all good and operating fine. So what we do is we just simply type in here in info and it'll be interesting to see if this works. Sometimes it doesn't for me. So type in info. Okay, nothing happened. I can never understand these things. It's kind of crazy. What I found worked for me is if I didn't get anything there, I just simply disconnected the battery and reconnected it again. Now I'm going to try typing in info again. And there we go. So now we've got all the information from the KISS ESC. The only thing that we need to really worry about here is the serial number right here. The serial number here is uh, basically the identity of this ESC. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the serial number. If you want to write it down, that's fine. I'm not going to bother writing it down. And what we're doing now is we're going to get a, a hex file made for this ESC. You need to know that this hex file is for this ESC only. So don't use this hex file in Flash 4 ESCs because that won't work. This hex file is for specifically for this ESC with this serial number. So only use it on that particular ESC. Right, once you've got the serial number for the ESC, it's a simple matter of going to this website. And this website, once again, is down in the uh, is down in the description and we copy the serial number of the ESC paste in there and go down to the bottom and make sure that is clicked right there and get hex file and what this website will do is generate a hex file for that uh, that ESC with that that serial number Ah, the joys of being in a hotel room. Absolute crap Wi-Fi. Uh, okay, right. Let's go to my phone. Okay, so now we have the serial number in there and get hex file. It'll generate the hex file for your serial number for that ESC. And now we've got done. Bring that across and we're all sorted. Now we can disconnect the USB and the battery. What we want to do now is there is those small bootloader pads in there. The bootloader pad we want to breach. So I'll go ahead and do that now. While I'm doing that, I am going to show you this really cool tool. This is a soldering iron that has really blown my mind. Now, I am very much of the opinion to get yourself a decent soldering iron like um, a Weller and sort of stuff. And I, I do use them where I can, but I travel a lot, so I need a battery powered soldering iron. This thing has, is really amazing. I first saw Tommy using this thing. It's from Banggood of all places, and it's called the TS100. Please do yourself a favor and go and check that out. It's a 60 watt soldering station that's battery powered. You can hook your 4S LiPo directly up to it. It takes up to 24 volts. Uh, the quality of the tips are amazing. It's stupidly powerful um, and it holds its heat absolutely amazingly uh, to give you an idea of how quickly it heats up. So it's also temperature controlled so you can have anywhere between I think 150 and 400 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is Fahrenheit but I don't care. 
And so all you need to do is watch this. This is how quick it is. I'm going to press it now. It's turning on. You can probably see it now. Heating up. 140 degrees. Default it goes up to 300 degrees and that's good enough for what we're doing. We're at 220 degrees already. 250 degrees. 270, 280. And she'll be ready to, yep, she's melting solder already. That's how quick this thing is. It's an amazing soldering iron and it's tiny. I can keep this in my flight bag and I carry it around with me everywhere. It's a bit of a godsend for me when I travel a lot. Okay, so that's the bootloader pads bridge. So now the bootloader pads are bridged. All we need to do is plug in the power once more. With the bootloader pads bridged, the LED won't come on. And that's perfectly normal. We plug in the USB UART. Once again, connect to Windows. And I'm going to open up a, a program called STM Flash Loader, I think it is. Once again, it's in the description. Easy enough to download. And all we need to change in here is going from COM port 1 to COM port 3, same as usual. And we need to set our board rate to 57600. Then press next and remove protection. Yes, we're all fine with that. Wait for it to do so and then press next. This should be all fine as default, but if it's not, double check it. And we can go through next. Now we need to select download to, to device and actually pick out the the file we want. It's a hex file, so down here we're going to change to hex file. And we're down the bottom here, there it is there. Select. And that is the hex file we're going to be using. And if you want to make sure that everything goes according to plan, you can tick this verify after download. So that's just going to make sure that the file was actually written correctly. So that way you don't do this and you put it back together and then you find out that it didn't work. So we just press next and it starts downloading the file onto the ESC and now it's verifying the download and it's all done and that's all done in terms of flashing the firmware what you do want to do is to unbridge the bootloader pads so don't just remove the wires if you don't unbridge the bootloader pads then it is not going to work. So I'll go ahead and unbridge the, seat, the bootloader pads now. And with the bootloader pads unbridged, the easiest test you can do is to plug in the power again. If you've managed to unbridge them successfully, when you plug it in, the, the blue light will come on. There we go, and go back off again and that's all perfectly fine. So now you need to do is just remove the wires and that ESC has been flashed with 1.02 and ready to go. One other thing I like to do is get a little white marker pen and to basically just write over the, the original sticker or put a white dot on there if there isn't a sticker. That way I know that all my ESCs are the same so you're not looking at that sticker and getting completely confused. But anyway guys, I really hope that you found that helpful um yeah get out there and do it if you do have comments put them in the comments list and so forth i will try to answer what i can but um i'm kind of busy with that sort of stuff you can also go to various facebook user groups that can help you out as well as rc groups and yeah, so there you go all done guys thanks